Our topic of discussion is about common competency allotted time is 56 hours for all the nine modules. The first module will be applying safety practices. This module covers safety practices applied in the workplace. The shielded metal arc welding, SMAW, NC2 qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to weld carbon steel plate and pipe components as specified by layout, blueprints, diagrams, work order, welding procedure or oral instructions using shielded metal arc welding equipment. This qualification conforms with American Welding Society, AWS, D1.1 Structural Welding Code. American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASME, Umber 9 in the Welding Code Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code. American Petroleum Institute, API, 1104 Code for Gas and Oil Pipeline Facilities, and International Standards Organization, ISO, 9606 One Qualification of Welders for Steel. Common Competencies. 1. Apply safety practices. 2. Interpret drawings and sketches. 3. Perform industry calculations. 4. Contribute to quality system. 5. Use hand tools. 6. Prepare weld materials. 7. Set up welding equipment. 8. Fit up weld materials. 9. Repair welds. Session Plan Sector Metals and Engineering Qualification Title Shielded Metal Arc Welding NC1 Unit of Competency Apply Safety Practices Module Title Applying Safety Practices Modular Descriptor This course is designed to enhance the knowledge, desirable attitudes and skills to perform shielded metal arc welding work to the standard expected in the workplace. The course covers competencies such as utilize specialized communications, develop team and individual needs, apply problem solving techniques in the workplace, perform workplace safety and housekeeping, interpret blueprint, set up work area equipment and accessories, prepare weld joints, deposit weld beads, prepare materials and tools, and weld carbon steel pipes and plates in all position for fillet and groove welds. The nominal duration of this course is 8 hours. Learning outcomes that every learner must undergo the following are Learning output 1 Identify hazardous area Learning output 2 Use personal protective clothing and devices Learning output 3 Perform safe handling of tools, equipment and materials Learning output 4 Perform first aid Learning Output 5 Use Fire Extinguisher To start with we will be discussing hazard and risk in the workplace. It is very important to know the meaning of the word hazard can be confusing. Often dictionaries do not give specific definitions or combine it with the term risk. For example, one dictionary defines hazard as a danger or risk which helps explain why many people use the terms interchangeably. There are many definitions for hazard but the most common definition when talking about workplace health and safety is, a hazard is any source of potential damage, harm or adverse health effects on something or someone. Let me discuss to you what are the different workplace hazards and what is the direct implication of this to the workers and the employers have a responsibility to protect workers against health and safety hazards at work. Workers have the right to know about potential hazards and to refuse work that they believe is dangerous. Workers also have a responsibility to work safely with hazardous materials. 1. There are four main types of workplace hazards. 1. Physical hazards are the most common hazards and are present in most workplaces at some time. Examples include, frayed electrical cords, unguarded machinery, exposed moving parts, constant loud noise, vibrations, working from ladders, scaffolding or heights, spills, tripping hazards. 2. Ergonomic hazards occur when the type of work you do, your body position and or your working conditions put a strain on your body. 
they are difficult to identify because you don't immediately recognize the harm they are doing to your health. Examples include, poor lighting, improperly adjusted workstations and chairs, frequent lifting, repetitive or awkward movements. 3. Chemical hazards are present when you are exposed to any chemical preparation, solid, liquid or gas, in the workplace. Examples include, cleaning products and solvents, vapors and fumes, carbon monoxide or other gases, gasoline or other flammable materials. 4. Biological hazards come from working with people, animals or infectious plant material. Examples include, blood or other bodily fluids, bacteria and viruses and insect bites. Recommending corrective action. The Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System, MIS, is a hazard communication system that provides employers and workers with information about many hazardous materials, referred to as controlled products, that are produced, handled, stored, used or disposed of in the workplace. The goal of MIS is to reduce accident and prevent health hazards. MIS addresses three important areas of workplace safety. One. Labels, all hazardous or controlled products must carry labels that clearly identify the product and provide hazard information about it. The label must indicate whether a workplace MSDS, see below, is available in the workplace. 2. Material Safety Data Sheets, MSDS, dash and MSDS must be provided for every controlled product in your workplace. The MSDS provides much more detailed information than a label. 3. Worker Education Every employer is expected to develop and implement an up-to-date education program to enable workers to understand and use the information that is provided on the labels and MSDS. This program should be reviewed at least once a year, and whenever there is a change in conditions or new hazard information concerning any hazardous substances in the workplace. Employers must keep written records of employee education. It is very important the every learners must know the various hazard symbols. The standard occupational health and safety provides hazard identification and elimination and risk assessment and control uses the following terms. 1. Harm, physical injury or damage to health. 2. Hazard, a potential source of harm to a worker. Hazards, risks may include but are not limited to a. Physical hazards, impact, illumination, pressure, noise, vibration, temperature, radiation. b. Biological hazards bacteria, viruses, plants, parasites, mites, molds, fungi, insects. c. Chemical hazards, dusts, fibers, mists, fumes, smoke, gases, vapors. d. Ergonomics hazards are factors in your environment that can harm the musculoskeletal system. They are injuries that are caused by strain placed on the body from ergonomic hazards and aren't always immediately obvious, making these hazards difficult to detect. e. Psychological factors, overexertion slash excessive force, awkward, static positions, fatigue direct pressure, varying metabolic cycles. 6. Physiological factors, monotony, personal relationship, workout cycle. The purpose of hazard management to further improve the method for systematically identifying, assessing and controlling hazards in the workplace as required by the Health and Safety in Employment Act. Now on the risk assessment is the process of estimating the magnitude of the risk and deciding what actions to take. The following questions are asked to establish the risk workplace hazards also include practices or conditions that release uncontrolled energy like an object that could fall from a height, potential or gravitational energy, a runaway chemical reaction, chemical energy. Risk is the chance or probability that a person will be harmed or experience an adverse health effect if exposed to a hazard. It may also apply to situations with property or equipment loss, or harmful effects on the environment. Definition of risk, likelihood, the chance of something happening. 
Note, in risk assessment terminology, the word likelihood is used to refer to the chance of something happening, whether defined, measured, or determined objectively or subjectively, qualitatively or quantitatively, and described using general terms or mathematically, for example, a probability or a frequency over a given time period. Example of risk such as cigarette smokers are 12 times, for example, more likely to die of lung cancer than non-smokers. Another potential exposure to hazards in the workplace always cause injury, illness or other adverse health effects. Personal Protective Equipment PPE. Employers have duties concerning the provision and use of personal protective equipment PPE, at work. PPE is equipment that will protect the user against health or safety risks at work or the training venue. It can include items such as safety helmets, gloves, eye protection, high visibility clothing, safety footwear and safety harnesses. It also includes respiratory protective equipment. Why is personal protective equipment, PPE, is very important? It will protect us from harm and risk of injury at the same time making the workplace safe includes providing instructions, procedures, training and supervision to encourage people to work safely and responsibly. PPE is needed in these cases to reduce the risk. Remember grinding and welding is a potential hazard. Use personal protective clothing and devices is necessary. On this topic I will discuss the danger of the arc flash, what is arc flash? During an arc flash, electric current leaves its intended path and travels to the ground, or from one conductor to another, through the air. Factors that can cause an arc flash include equipment failure, dust, dropped tools and corrosion. Injuries can be devastating, as arc flash temperatures can reach 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is three times hotter than the surface of the sun. An arc flash also can produce noise reaching 140 decibels. Avoiding arc flash electrical events can severely injure, or kill, workers. Preventing arc flashes Arc flash Arc flash hazard analysis Electrical safety hierarchy of controls Electricity can present many dangers for workers, including arc flash hazards. An arc flash occurs when high amp amperage currents travel, or arc, through the air. This can happen when high voltage differences exist across a gap between conductors. The result is an immediate release of tremendous amounts of energy that can reach temperatures as high as 36,000 degrees Fahrenheit. While personal protective equipment has tremendous utility, it is not the goggles provide better protection than safety glasses, and are effective in preventing eye injury from chemical splashes, impact, dusty environments and welding. 8. Goggles with high airflow should be used to prevent fogging. Learning Output 3. Perform safe handling of tools, equipment and materials safety tips when handling hand and power tools. Inspect your tools. Never issue or use a damaged or defective hand or power tool. Pick the right tool. Make sure you are using the correct tool for the task at hand. Wear your PPE. Don't alter your tools. Handle with care. Keep your distance. Pick up after yourself. Unplug and disconnect. Safe handling of tools tips. Workers should be trained on safe procedures for working with tools. However, safer practices when carrying or storing those tools may not be thoroughly covered. Tools can pose a safety risk when they are misplaced or improperly handled by workers. The National Safety Council offers the following tips for safe handling of tools when they are not in use. Workers should never carry tools up or down a ladder in a way that inhibits grip. Ideally, Tools should be hoisted up and down using a bucket or strong bag, rather than being carried by the worker. Tools should always be carefully handed from one employee to another, never tossed. Pointed tools should be passed either in their carrier or with the handles toward the receiver. Workers carrying large tools or equipment on their shoulders should pay close attention to clearances when turning and maneuvering around the workplace. 
pointed tools such as chisels and screwdrivers should never be carried in a worker's pocket. Except negationable ways to carry them include in a toolbox, pointed down in a tool belt or pocket tool pouch, or in the hand with the tip always held away from the body. Tools should always be put away when not in use. Leaving tools lying around on an elevated structure such as a scaffold poses a significant risk to workers below. This risk increases in areas with heavy vibration. Though a simple equipment to handle, handheld grinders can be dangerous if proper safety precautions are not taken and if used without wearing personal protective equipment, PPE. This device gives out loud noises and a lot of spark which can be very harmful. Grinding wheel consists of several smaller parts which should be properly assembled and tightened together. Make sure that the right flanges are used and attached properly for a smooth movement. Ensure that there are no traces of burr or flash. 1. Use right wheel dimension. Using the right dimension of grinding wheel plays an important role in ensuring safety and achieving higher efficiency. Using the right dimension wheel also helps in achieving the maximum allowed rotation speed of the grinding wheel. 2. Always test before running. Grinders must always be tested before beginning any kind of work. Test run the grinder in a safe enclosed area such as beneath the workbench to detect any kind of damage or fault in the wheel or the grinder. 3. Always wear personal protective equipment. Never use the grinder without wearing all the personal protective equipment and clothing such as goggles, helmets, masks, ear protection, gloves, leather aprons etc. Also ensure that the personal protective equipment and tools are in proper condition before using them. 4. Carry out maintenance at regular intervals of time. Carry out maintenance of grinders at regular intervals of time and as stated by the manufacturer. Never use a faulty device and carry out all possible preventive maintenance for safe operation of the grinder. Learning Output for Perform First Aid First aid is the first and immediate assistance given to any person suffering from either a minor or serious illness or injury, with care provided to preserve life, prevent the condition from worsening, or to promote recovery. It includes initial intervention in a serious condition prior to professional medical help being available, such as performing cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, while waiting for an ambulance, as well as the complete treatment of minor conditions, such as applying a plaster to a cut. First aid is generally performed by someone with basic medical training. There are many situations that may require first aid, and many countries have legislation, regulation, or guidance which specifies a minimum level of first aid provision in certain circumstances. This can include specific training or equipment to be available in the workplace, such as an automated external defibrillator, the provision of specialist first aid cover at public gatherings, or mandatory first aid training within schools. First aid, however, does not necessarily require any particular equipment or prior knowledge, and can involve improvisation with materials available at the time, often by untrained people. 4. The primary goal of first aid is to prevent death or serious injury from worsening. The key aims of first aid can be summarized with the acronym of the three P's, 16. Preserve life. The overriding aim of all medical care which includes first aid, is to save lives and minimize the threat of death. First aid done correctly should help reduce the patient's level of pain and calm them down during the evaluation and treatment process. Prevent further harm. Prevention of further harm includes addressing both external factors, such as moving a patient away from any cause of harm, and applying first aid techniques to prevent worsening of the condition, such as applying pressure to stop a bleed becoming dangerous. Promote recovery. First aid also involves trying to start the recovery process from the illness or injury, and in some cases might involve completing a treatment such as in the case of applying a plaster to a small wound. It is important to note that first aid is not medical treatment and cannot be compared with what a trained medical professional provides.
First aid involves making common sense decisions in the best interest of an injured person. Catastrophic bleeding, massive external bleeding. Airway, clearing airways. Breathing, ensuring respiration. Circulation, internal bleeding. Disability, neurological condition. Environment, overall examination, environment. A major benefit of these protocols is that they require minimum resources, time and skills with a great degree of success in saving lives under conditions unfavorable for applying first aid. Assessment of circulation is now not usually carried out for patients who are not breathing, with first aiders now trained to go straight to chest compressions, and thus providing artificial circulation, but pulse checks may be done on less serious patients. Dot. Preserving life. The patient must have an open airway, that is, an unobstructed passage that allows air to travel from the open mouth or uncongested nose, down through the pharynx and into the lungs. Conscious people maintain their own airway automatically, but those who are unconscious, with a GCS of less than 8, may be unable to do so, as the part of the brain that manages spontaneous breathing may not be functioning. A first responder should know how to use an automatic external defibrillator, AED, in the case of a person having a sudden cardiac arrest. The survival rate of those who suffer a cardiac arrest outside of the hospital is low. Permanent brain damage sets in after five minutes of no oxygen delivery, so rapid action on the part of the rescuer is necessary. And is a device that can examine a heartbeat and produce electric shock to restart the heart. 20. A first aider should be prepared to quickly deal with less severe problems such as cuts, grazes or bone fracture. They may be able to completely resolve a situation if they have the proper training and equipment. For situations that are more severe, complex or dangerous, a first aider might need to do the best they can with the equipment they have, and wait for an ambulance to arrive at the scene. Learning Output 5 Use Fire Extinguisher Using a Fire Extinguisher 1. Pull, pull the pin, this will break the tamper seal. 2. Aim, aim low, pointing the nozzle or hose at the base of the fire. 3. Squeeze, squeeze the handle to release the extinguishing agent. 4. Sweep, sweep from side to side at the base of the fire, the fuel source until the fire is out. If fire extinguishers are available for employee use, it is the employer's responsibility to educate employees on the principles and practices of using a fire extinguisher and the hazards associated with fighting small or developing fires. 29 CFR 1910.157 G. 1. This education must be provided annually and when a new employee is first hired. 29 CFR 1910.157 G. 2. Employees who have been designated to use fire extinguishers as part of the emergency action plan, must be trained on how to use the fire extinguishers appropriately in the workplace. 29 CFR 1910.157 G. 3. This training is a specialized form of education that focuses on developing or improving skills and it must be provided annually and when employees are first assigned these duties. 29 CFR 1910.157 G. Using a fire extinguisher. The following steps should be followed when responding to incipient stage fire. Sound the fire alarm and call the fire department, if appropriate. Identify a safe evacuation path before approaching the fire. Do not allow the fire, heat, or smoke to come between you and your evacuation path. Select the appropriate type of fire extinguisher. Discharge the extinguisher within its effective range using the PSS technique, pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. Back away from an extinguished fire in case it flames up again. Evacuate immediately if the extinguisher is empty and the fire is not out. Evacuate immediately if the fire progresses beyond the incipient stage. 
The is the last topic of apply safety practices identifying the different types of fire extinguisher. These are the type of fire extinguisher. A. Water and foam. Water and foam fire extinguishers extinguish the fire by taking away the heat element of the fire triangle. Foam agents also separate the oxygen element from the other elements. Water extinguishers are for class A fires only, they should not be used on class B or C fires. B. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide fire extinguishers extinguish fire by taking away the oxygen element of the fire triangle and also be removing the heat with a very cold discharge. Carbon dioxide can be used on class B and C fire dry chemical. C. Dry chemical fire extinguishers extinguish the fire primarily by interrupting the chemical reaction of the fire triangle. Today's most widely used type of fire extinguisher is the multi-purpose dry chemical that is effective on class A, B, and C fires. This agent also works by creating a barrier between the oxygen element and the fuel element on class A fires. D. Wet chemical. Wet chemical is a new agent that extinguishes the fire by removing the heat of the fire triangle and prevents re-ignition by creating a barrier between the oxygen and fuel elements. E. Dry powder. Dry powder extinguishers are similar to dry chemical except that they extinguish the fire by separating the fuel from the oxygen element or by removing the heat element of the fire triangle. However, Dry powder extinguishers are for class D or combustible metal fires, only. They are ineffective on all other classes of fires. F. Water mist. Water mist extinguishers are a recent development that extinguish the fire by taking away the heat element of the fire triangle. They are an alternative to the clean agent extinguishers where contamination is a concern. Water mist extinguishers are primarily for class A fires although they are safe for use on class C fires as well. G. Cartridge Operated Dry Chemical Cartridge Operated Dry Chemical Fire Extinguishers extinguish the fire primarily by interrupting the chemical reaction of the fire triangle. Like the stored pressure dry chemical extinguishers, the multi-purpose dry chemical is effective on class A, B, and C fires. This agent also works by creating a barrier between the oxygen element and the fuel element on class A fires. Thank you for listening and always subscribe to this channel.